Hello, first up from ABG7 we have the Ham HS8, uh, the first of four curls in this part, as you can probably tell from the thumbnail actually. Anyway, yeah, a, uh, a pretty standard uh, sort of supercar. I think it's a good looking car, um, but I don't think it's anything too special. There's some decent attention to detail in places, things like the side markers here and here, the, uh, the aerial just some like little things like that that some people tend to miss out on um, so I do like that um, I just don't think that it's particularly special uh, if that makes sense I think it's a pretty standard sort of supercar shape there's nothing too creative going on in terms of fixtures or anything besides these headlights uh, I do like the idea using normal one and uh, just painting it over with a, um, a like the transparent the glass with just like a normal color to sort of create the uh, impression of like fog li uh, fog lights pop-ups um, so yeah that's a cool feature um, there is also if I get really nitpicky things like uh, the vents overlapping the plastic there not particularly a fan of that but um, yeah other than that um, yeah I think that's just me being really nitpicky um, I think the back here is just a bit plain I don't really have anything I could suggest to improve it, uh, personally. Uh, I think I'd have to experiment a bit with it, but in my opinion, it's just way too flat and empty here. I think there just needs to be something to um, break up the space. Maybe even if it just had a bigger plate, like one of the normal sized plates, and it was lowered a bit further down, it would just look a bit less barren and empty, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, oh yeah, I gave it a 6 out of 10 for styling. I think it does do some things quite well, but I think at the same time it is also a bit just plain um, and not particularly creative, I suppose. But it does have some good attention to detail, and it is still a decent looking car. Anyway, yeah, not much to talk about chassis-wise, just aluminium panels come fibre chassis, and it's mid-longitudinal. A uh, rather square... Uh, or a fairly square, slightly uh, over square um, V8 uh, with dual head cam 4 valve nothing too crazy there and um, yeah again bottom end just pretty standard stuff sort of a mid-range cam profile well for a supercar uh, 65 cam uh, isn't too aggressive compared to some of the stuff we've seen at least um, no VVT either which is interesting it is pushing the limits of uh, engineering time. I wonder if it's partly to do with this. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, yeah, quality does add loads to engineering time. But uh, if it needs it, which doesn't really seem like it needed plus three there. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so a sort of just like middle of the road thing. They, this entire engine sort of gives me the impression like a detuned like racing engine or something it, it feels a bit like it's been detuned it's only running on 95 um the fuel mixture is sort of middle of the road it's like ultra lean going for the fuel economy section of this which i think everyone overbuilt for anyway so it's fine um and it's not like sort of in the really aggressive rich area uh but it is just sort of a um middle of the road sort of slightly sporty setup uh, ignition timing at 100, I assume that's just getting maximum power. I'll have to look into that more, because uh, I would have thought running so, as like a slightly lower ignition timing uh, would usually do better, but as we've seen on a couple of cars, uh, that's not necessarily the case. Um, in fact, just sort of give you a quick experiment here. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, as you can see, bigger gains there. You get a bit more low end power I suppose, but uh, yeah, clearly I need to um, uh, go over that a bit more, get a better understanding of it. But uh, yeah, anyway, rest of the engine. Um, pretty standard dual exhausts, uh, long tubular, and then just two reverse flows, going for a more quiet, civilised uh, style, which I think sums up this car pretty well. Um, it is quite civilised in the way, well, I don't know, we'll get, we'll get on to that. Some things about it are less, so. Um, but yeah, gearing-wise, I think it's quite a good gearing setup. Um, 
it's not like crazy amounts of wheel spin. I mean, it's not like brutally optimized for zero to 60 or anything. It's controlling wheel spin well, um, geared right for top speed. And um, yeah, just overall a pretty good setup. I am surprised by the top speed. There's what, 192 with only 420 horsepower, which I think is quite impressive considering everything. Um, wheels, it's got a bit of stagger, not loads. It's got actually quite a balanced weight distribution. Um, something like, I think it's 58% in the rear, which I you know is still a lot, but it is a mid-engine car. So um, it is sort of, for a mid-engine car, especially with a big V8, it is sort of balanced, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, seeing this sort of setup is a bit surprising. I think I know why though, we'll get onto that with the suspension. Um, but yeah, it is right on the edge of sportiness there. Um, so maybe not totally civilised there, but uh, it is hopefully going to work out quite well for the test driver, as uh, he seems to like his oversteery cars. Uh, brake setup I really like here. Um, it's not exactly the lightest setup, um, but there's no brake fade at all. And um, yeah, it is pretty balanced. Slightly rear biased, but I'm not sure if it's enough to really make it noticeable or bad in any way. Um, should be fairly drivable. Um, yeah, uh, just standard sort of um, setup here. No adjustment to pad type, just one pistons, big vented discs, and it all works out well. Pretty good braking distance too, 33 meters. Uh, fully clad under tray. Interestingly, they've given it a bit bit of extra cooling airflow, and I'm not really sure what that's about. It's way over the reliability minimum. I did give it a test, and if you drop the cooling airflow down, you can get it to hit 200 without even touching the gearing. So, I mean, that is if you push the very limits of reliability, which I get that some people aren't comfortable with. They say there's gaming and min-maxing. Personally, I don't have a problem with that. The rules are there to be pushed. But yeah, I sort of see why some people don't like doing it. Uh, the other thing, bit of rear downforce there. It's only some like, yeah, 50 kilograms at top speed. So I'm not sure if that's going to do an awful lot. The front lip has no effect in beam NG. So unless there's a wing hidden there, which I don't think there is, uh, there won't be any front downforce. Um, maybe that's enough to keep it stable. There isn't a lot of surface area there though, or wing angle. So I get the feeling that it isn't going to do a lot in BeamNG uh, to actually help the test driver, but uh, maybe it'll help a little bit. Um, and sport interior and premium cassette with a bit of extra quality. Uh, safety, quite overkill, uh, really. I mean, again, I get it, not wanting to push the limits because it's a bit min-maxy. Personally, I don't care again, as I've said. Um, but yeah, there is like a good 50 kilograms you can take out by going there. Uh, no ABS, which uh, yeah is why having a good brake setup is crucial. Hopefully should be nice and easy for the test driver, uh, regardless, uh, without the ABS even. Uh, and then variable hydraulic power steering, which is surprisingly rare in this challenge, um, which I don't really get. Um, anyway, yeah, suspension setup, pretty standard sort of cheaper sports car, I suppose. But interestingly, there's very little camber going on. I'm not quite sure why. Um, yeah, that does feel like a bit of a weird setup um, to go with there. No front camber at all, and uh, any bit on the rear. And like the suspension setup, it's not really optimized for anything specific. So I'm not sure what they were going for there. Um, like, um, the rear suspension's a bit soft or the front's a bit too stiff. Either way, it's not, or it could be improved a bit um, for sportiness or for prestige, no comfort even. Although, I suppose you'll want to go more towards sportiness in this challenge. Um, speaking of which, though, they are quite good stats. Both of them above 60, uh, which is very good. From OME, we have the Iguana 12. Uh, this is my pick for the uh, the best looking car gets the full 10 out of 10 uh, from me I think this is exactly what I was thinking of when you think of like an 80 supercar it's uh, it's this sort of thing uh, sort of excessive sort of extreme but there's also some nice details I really like the asymmetric badges here Iguana on one side um, 
V12 on the other, even though it's only got a V8. I assume some downsizing for my potentially a bit restrictive rules. Um, yeah. Also, just noticed the door handles are like that, probably because they're like scissor doors, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I do like it a lot. Um, I know all the vents probably don't make sense um, in a lot of places, but I think it does still look realistic in what it is. There's nothing um, to out of place or anything. I think it all looks good. I especially like the attention to detail on the engine cover. I know part of it is that there's just loads of vents slapped down, but I think they're done in a very well, nice way. Um, don't really have many complaints on the styling. I think this is very much a 80s supercar and what it should be. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, plates being slightly smaller does annoy me a bit. I'm not sure maybe that's a thing that happens in America. I mean, you can get smaller plates, I suppose, but it does look a bit odd when they have the standard California uh, thing on it. So I suppose it's that, but maybe it looks really out of place if they're full-sized. Um, and then just so that little brief spoiler there, the little lip. Uh, yeah, I don't get what that's about at all, to be honest. I think it'd look way better without it, or maybe like a actual wing. I do like the uh, Lamborghini Miura Yota, where the... Um, or Jota, however you want to pronounce it, uh, with the like big wing on the top there. No, but um, yeah, I think just overall, just a very good looking car. Um, I think, yeah, it just does look period correct, does um, look the part, and I think it is a good looking car as well. Um, it is the sort of car I could see on a poster um, on my wall, even. Maybe I should print it out. Maybe I should do that. Some of the best challenge cars I like. Make posters of. I don't know. I'll think about that. Because uh, my room needs some decoration. Anyway. Um, yeah. Pretty standard stuff again. Transverse engine interestingly. Uh, especially given the size of it. 7 litres V8. Um, and it is a high angle one as well. Which I suppose makes sense actually. It takes up less room. Uh, although width isn't an issue. Um... Yeah, big thing there, peak power at red line. It can afford to rev out a bit more, and it does have enough reliability to do so without any issues. So, I don't know. I get that it's everyone's instinct to not have any of this be red, or like yellow or anything. Really, as long as like these two at the top aren't uh, um, in any different colours. Like, especially for a supercar, these are all fine. I know they might hurt the stats a bit, but... Uh, yeah, performance is what matters as much as uh, anything else, really. Um, or well, performance is even more important. Anyway, yeah, there's a bit of leftover octane there, which uh, I'm not really sure why. Um, yeah, I did go over the bottom end. Well, I didn't because there's nothing to say about it. Uh, and then, yeah, performance intake, Super 98. Very lean fuel mixture, so I'm guessing they're going for the fuel economy thing. I'm not sure how well that's going to work out with the massive engine. It does reckon it'll get 17 mpg, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that transfers to BMG. Apparently quite efficient at high RPM as well, so maybe it will go about the same distance that we've been seeing other cars go. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, the only like especially weird thing about this engine, though, besides peak power at uh, peak RPM, uh, is its exhaust setup. I'm not sure why it's got a two-way. Uh, catalytic converter, especially because the freeway fits, and you can see already there's a good 30 horsepower gain there, and you can drop the quality one, I'll just hold it uh, before I mess up yeah, drop freeway on uh, well within the rules and um, yeah, you can get uh, 588 so yeah, that's a bit odd uh, not entirely sure what that's about. Maybe they were trying to make it quieter and didn't want to have two reverse flows or something. Or just a reverse flow. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's certainly uh, just a bit weird. Um, and you can see on the gearing thing, it's overgeared, um, which is limiting top speed. I think if you lowered that top speed, uh, you would be able to crank 200, I think. Yeah, because it's at like 198. Yeah, you can see the gains there, like 202. 
203 even. Yeah, which, uh, yeah, some good performance there. Did actually some of the stats start going down there? Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, I suppose it's because of wheel spin. You'd have to adjust the gearing again. Um, yeah. Tyres, uh, medium compound with a lot of stagger on them. Like, uh, those are some tiny front tyres versus the rear. Uh, with medium compound, so it's just about pulling 1G, which is quite low, and it's got steel wheels. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. I'm not sure if maybe the tyres were they were pushing for fuel economy, but I, to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if this was more efficient just because the corner speed you could take, especially at like racing speeds, uh, which is what these cars are going to be driven at. Um, you can carry more momentum. So I'm not sure if this is like supposed to be trying to do fuel economy, maybe it's also for the stagger, maybe to try and keep drivability out of oversteer um, if that makes sense uh, but yeah although I actually pulled it slightly away, further away from the uh, like oversteer line or above the oversteer line um, if that makes sense brakes, very overpowered front brakes um, there's a bit of fade, I don't think they'll matter too much and uh, yeah, I think one higher braking distances, at least for like the series supercars, just because of those tyres. Um, yeah, I don't know, the brake setup, this is about what you'd expect. Does it have ABS? It does. Then this should be fine to drive. Um, yeah, I don't know, you save a bit of weight versus going uh, one pistons and really big discs. So there's always two sides to it, but uh, yeah. Um, I think this will be fine. Uh, there is quite a little wing angle, um, which is a shame because it won't have any effect in automation, uh, in BeamNG even. Uh, I don't know if any, no, there's no lips down at the bottom there, so unless there are some wings hidden inside, which I don't believe so. Uh, have a peek inside. Uh, don't see any. Those are just the vents and stuff. Yeah. Um, unless there were like some wings hidden underneath it somewhere. Yeah. There's. Um, this isn't going to transfer into BeamNG, so this girl's got no downforce basically. Um, since the lips don't do anything. Uh, it does have some reduced cooling airflow. Still plenty over the reliability minimum and some minor brake airflow. Not actually sure how effective that is. What was that? Five? Yeah, it takes off a bit. I can see it being useful. Apparently, it's more powerful than BeamNG as well. So maybe that's why. Um, luxury uh, interior with a standard cassette and a lot of positive quality uh, on the interior. Uh, even then, it's only just over, which is interesting. Uh, just standard hydraulic power steering, advanced AT safety, so a very safe car probably part of the reason why it weighs quite a lot well I say quite a lot, that's not too crazy but 1350 kilograms uh, standard with adaptive dampers and then sort of a fairly generic setup I guess, again not particularly optimised for anything as far as I can tell so yeah, I don't know, setup's a bit weird in places but at least it looks good right? Hopefully I'll do a bit better in BeamNG. From Dracer X, the Egg... Egetlam? I've just realised I haven't tried pronouncing that out loud. Egetlam. X10TT. I'm going to go with that. It's probably wrong. Uh, I don't know, I'll ask him how to pronounce it. And then mess it up again in the BeamNG section. Anyway, it's... Um, yeah, you can see. Uh, super saloon thing. It's got uh, sort of these uh, hidden headlights and things. It reminds me of those um, sort of 80s Jambala kits and things like that. I think it was Jambala. Um, might be butchering the pronunciation on that as well. But yeah, the um, sort of things you'd see on uh, German cars mostly. Um, I think they made one for uh, Porsches and things like that. Um, I think they had one like really weird like four headlight pop-ups kit or something. Um, but yeah, I can see that with the like weird streaks and the, the streaks even 
um, and the like uh, circle vents at the front. It doesn't look like a production car as much as something that's been modified in uh, special ways. Um, it's yeah, uh, the headlights and things having like hidden headlights. I'm not sure if the idea is they flip up, uh, which would probably make sense because if they don't, I don't think a lot of light's going to come out of that. Uh, might not be the most practical, but then again, nothing about this car particularly screams practical. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's um, some interesting ideas here. I think it's a cool idea going for that sort of style of car. I don't think it's, it was executed particularly well. Uh, things like on the back here, they've used this grill, but uh, it's uh, got holes in it. So you uh, sort of see into the bodywork, I think maybe putting like another fixture underneath it. Uh, a grill and then just making that like a uh, plastic or body coloured uh, thing just to sort of make it look a bit more normal things like that uh, does have four exhausts at least um, and also yeah little things like the uh, having two cutouts I, I'm not sure if they have the mod but there is a mod in I shouldn't have laid out miscellaneous fixtures um, but yeah there's a mod that you can use to sort of create exhaust cutouts and things uh, like that, like uh, yeah, this one. Use this creates like a nice hole that you can use to sort of uh, create a cutout. You'd have to use the other exhausts, but yeah, just as an example. There. Um, otherwise, yeah, I don't know. There's some good attention to detail in that they remembered to put the non-locking doors at the back there. Um, I've made that mistake once or twice. Uh, yeah, uh, lots of lips around the car. Um, are these? No, these are just bumper bars. Uh, and then obviously the big wing at the back, uh, which isn't really doing much, but we'll get to that later. Um, Galvanized chassis, uh, or steel monocoque, uh, but with fiberglass panels, which, yeah, again, sort of a body kitted, modified, tuned car is uh, sort of the impression I get from that. It has a 4.1 litre V10, which, as you can see, is all the turbo lag. It's not actually the worst car we've had in this uh, challenge, but it is up there. Um, well, yeah, it is up there, but it's still miles off the worst one. But yeah, loads of turbo lag, barely yet spooled up. Uh, when it does, it does come on nicely. Uh, 570 horsepower at peak, or 571, I should say. Um, and there is at least some usable RPM up there. It isn't like it's just a pointed arrow and then it's nothing to work with because the red line cuts off there. Uh, but yeah, very low compression. Uh, I assume it's, yeah, lots of boost. Very high cam profile, which doesn't exactly help. Um, and yeah, a very big compressor and turn out, uh, turbine setup. You can easily make it spool up a bit quicker. High AR set it to like uh, 1.4 and drop the compressor down and you can get like a went a bit lower um, you can see already I've just like chucked on click two sliders and already it's making a bit more low end power and a bit more top end as well the compressor I think is a bit big I think while I was messing around um, I got something like uh, 800 while still making it spool up a bit quicker um, uh, 800 sorry no uh, 580 yeah now that'd be impressive if I could get 800 and make it spool quicker but I think that's really possible at least without totally modifying it so yeah um, multi-point injection all pretty standard stuff running on super fuel bit of leftover octane but not really much you can do maybe put a bit more boost in although it might be running to the edge of reliability it is so maybe you can't get away with more boost. Very high ignition timing. Um, not not the richest fuel mixture. Uh, it could go richer, but I suppose there is still some fuel economy you've got to take into account. Um, and then, yeah, very simple exhaust setup. All straight throughs with a high flow cat. Uh, it does have a very high top speed. It is slightly undergeared, but 204 miles per hour. Um, it could go bit higher still, 206 there, but that's about it. Um, 
6.7 seconds to 60 because despite all that power there's just so much turbo lag you can't really get going and even then uh, you get loads of wheel spin because the turbos aren't spooled up in first you get nothing from launch but then once you shift into seven, uh, second the wheels are spinning and there's nothing you can do to stop it really uh, there's loads of tyre stagger too uh, 250s on the front and uh, 325s on the rear which is weird for a front engine rear wheel drive car um, I did have to double check there that it wasn't, well I suppose it being a wheel drive would make it even weirder but yeah, not quite sure why there's so much stagger maybe like the last car trying to control the uh, oversteer a bit trying to keep it drivable and easy uh, I'm not really sure there uh, and uh, some nice and fancy magnesium wheels uh, to get some more prestige I suppose uh, quite big brakes and two pistons on the front probably because it's quite a heavy car needs some effort stopping although actually more weight means that you need less braking force if that makes sense um, well it should do hopefully but yeah um, ignoring that uh, yeah big brakes two pistons on the back they're a little smaller uh, which does make sense though it doesn't need as much force at the rear there's a bit of brake fade I don't think that's going to be too much of a killer or if it will even notice it at all because it does do over 200 miles, miles an hour and sort of the brake fade calculation takes top speed into account so faster cars like that uh, you do get that very low cooling airflow uh, shame it doesn't have an under tray really although I'm not sure it can really no can't oh plus 11 quality there we go that's why um, yeah lots of uh, aero quality and uh, not a lot of cooling airflow um, helping it get to its top speed um, did I call it cooling quality? I might have done um, aerodynamic quality anyway not aerodynamics whatever uh, five seats which is kind of interesting uh, for a car like this I would have thought like go four or whatever but uh, yeah I wonder what a sport free bench seat is um, that's something I'd like to see but uh, maybe you get like three bucket seats side by side in there. I don't know. And then a, a lot of quality there as well. Probably trying to pull down the weight a bit more. Um, what was it? Plus 10. Yeah. A lot of weight there. Although it still doesn't do a lot. But there's a good like sort of 20 kilograms off. 30 kilograms. Which is fair enough. Uh, a bit of extra quality there. No ABS. So our test driver is going to be very happy with that. Any basic 80s safety, um, maybe not as much of a family car as we thought, but it's still well over the uh, minimum there. Just gonna click that, change, get rid of the colours. Uh, adaptive dampers, uh, a bit of camber, and it is sort of somewhat optimised. It's not like perfectly optimised for anything, but it is sort of there is like a middle ground between everything. Um, maybe going for stats somewhere. Uh, I'm not really sure. I uh, feel like it could probably be optimised for a bit more sportiness without sacrificing too much comfort. Also a lot of quality there in suspension. Uh, this car is probably going to be a nightmare for our test driver. Uh, I don't think he's going to like it much, but it'll be entertaining to watch, so stick around for that. And finally, we have from Cool Key the uh, Grahet Super Clarity. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, that should be the tagline for my challenges, really, for uh, all the curls I get sent in. Anyway, yeah, this car I am torn on. Um, I'm not sure if those mirrors are the right colours as well. They might have glitched, but uh, I don't think that would affect the score anyway. Um, yeah, I think I was looking at colours and stuff, trying to figure out how glossy this was, um, and couldn't figure it out. And I think I might have broke the mirrors somehow in the process. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this car I am absolutely torn on. It's on one hand sort of very 80s, very uh, very much a 80s sort of supercar uh, or sports car or whatever um, with like all the plastic and stuff. It does also look like it's just been rolled out of a Halfords slash auto zone or well, your regional equivalent. Uh, it's, yeah, the chrome vents and things that just sort of look slapped on and the big chrome wheels I get that that was part of the era but in my eyes it does look really ugly uh, I think the fact that it's an 82 as well it's been up updated 
does sort of help its case with all these as well. Um, yeah, I was sort of torn between giving it a four and a five, uh, sort of comparing it to some curls and like what I gave those. Uh, so I gave it a four point five, basically. Um, I didn't intend to give decimals, but I think that's what's going to be the case. If I can't decide, I'll just average it. Um, yeah, it's. I don't know. It's it's good as an eighties curl, but it's also very ugly. In my eyes, I don't know. I do like some bits about it, like these uh, sort of light bar things here and the uh, indicators by the uh, pop-ups. Although I don't think they're lined up in the best way. I suppose, actually, if you do line them up with that line, then they're sort of angled outwards. Probably not the best. Um, but yeah, I uh, I don't know. And things like the, the paint, which is sort of glossy, but also kind of matte. Uh, Sort of makes me think it looks a bit almost uh, spray canned on, like a sort of driveway paint job. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I really like the tail light design as well. I think there's some cool stuff going on there. This car has some really cool ideas, but also some really odd ideas, um, especially these vents by here. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on a bit. Uh, uh, aluminium panels, only a plain steel monocoque and uh yeah nothing else really to talk about chassis wise but it is interesting to have just a plain steel monocoque i suppose um yeah a uh square uh 5.1 liter v8 or aluminium pretty standard stuff um it is a twin turbo forged bottom end and uh, quite an open turbo setup actually as you can see it does have quite a low cam profile though Probably one of the lowest, barring the curl that has one at zero. Um, yeah, um, overall, like just sort of a decent, drivable yet powerful setup. Uh, this turbo setup, especially, I wouldn't have thought a setup that this green would work, but uh, here we are, and it is spooling up in a decent amount of time, and it's making decent power. It's not like sort of 100 HP per litre, but it's close. And um, yeah, it's just like very drivable and uh, useful. Also quite efficient, not that that's particularly relevant when we're doing it while driving down here. Um, where it really st starts to tank in like the final sort of couple. Actually it's also very efficient at that RPM. Maybe if you like keep stalling it and like it holds it at that sort of RPM s somehow. I don't know. I'm not even sure how that would work. Never mind. Ignore me. Uh, very lean fuel mixture. Sort of a a little road ignition timing, maybe even a bit too low. Uh, but again, maybe just trying to optimize for efficiency. And then just a dual exhaust, high flow, that's great through and reverse flow with a bit of extra quality there. A bit more on the body. Um, all wheel drive. Uh, so 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Um, yeah, which I don't know, it's a decent time um, considering the weight and everything. And I don't think this is the most aerodynamic bodies. I do think it is maybe a bit overgeared. I think this can go a bit quicker. There's no wheel spin at all. And I know part of it's down to tyres, 255s with semi slicks. But yeah, I think spacing's probably a bit too. Um, yeah, a bit too wide. Although stats don't seem to like it, so maybe they do it the right idea. Um, and it does also kill fuel economy. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that does work. Um, Going on to wheels, well I've already mentioned they are uh, semi slicks and decently wide with a bit of quality, uh, alloy wheels as well. Uh, there's a bit of brake fade there, uh, again it might be a bit more problematic than other cars that have had that sort of brake fade since it is, it does have a lower top speed, 176 going to this, uh, I'm not sure how, yeah I know it is representative. Um, so yeah, that might be a bit more noticeable, may creep into the run a bit, uh, we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, the brake setup otherwise pretty good, uh, balance setup not too overpowered or anything. And yeah, just big one piston uh, brakes. Bit of wing angle, uh, so that wing is doing something, and there's a bit of like natural angle on it. Uh, it's not the biggest, but there's some decent service area there, so it should do some decent stuff. Uh, that front lip won't do anything, so 90 wing angle, at least it won't bring drag or anything. 
but I get why it's there. Uh, so sort of trying to balance it out in automation for the handling stats, maybe boost sportiness a bit. Uh, and a semi-clad under trade to sort of help fight the drag. Quite a lot of break airflow as well, um, which I suppose is needed. What's that, 50? Yeah, it does help a bit. Um, just break airflow really only helps on like the really high top speed curls. Maybe I have been told it does a bit more in BeamNG. Um, I should really test that myself at some point. Um, yeah, well, I'll have, I'll have to do a bit of an experiment there. Um, yeah, sports interior, standard cassette, then it does have ABS, so uh, test driver is happy, hydraulic power steering, and then standard 80s safety. Um, bit of uh, camera on the front, bit more on the rear, fairly balanced. I mean, it is a 50 50 power split. And, uh, oh, yeah. This car is uh, quite old, actually. I do remember it on some of the old uh, forum challenges. Well, maybe not this very one, but uh, an adapted version. And, uh, yeah, this sort of setup um, with uh, numbers ending in six, that uh, takes me back. I think I have a car like that myself, but, uh, yeah, takes me back a bit. I'm saying that like it's some big nostalgia thing. I don't know what I'm on about now. Um... But yeah, uh, a bizarre car to uh, end, uh, end us on. Um, definitely got some uh, interesting ideas here. I am interested to see how it performs in BeamNG with some good tyres, decent all-round performance. Uh, I think the test driver is going to like it, but I am worried that it will be a bit understeery for his tastes and he won't be able to get the most from it. Uh, we'll have to see. Anyway... Uh, this is the end of the video. Uh, subscribe to Boost and Ethanol. Thank you for watching and goodbye.